the great Rush Limbaugh said, when are we going to see pushback? Rush, I'm looking at it. My, I'm John Sensor, and my son and I drove in from Nebraska with a huge, ginormous flag. And it's sitting right over there in between a whole bunch of trucks. And it's crying out, illuminate me, illuminate me. I purchased this flag a year ago. And it's been sitting in my camper because I've been waiting for the right time to unfurl it. I decided a while back I was going to call it the Unite in Light Freedom Flag. And I heard about this event, the event, I was following them, and God told me, this is the time to unfurl it. it it's never been unfurled before, this is going to be the first time, and there's no other flag like it, because it has that beautiful Spanish gold border around it. So... When you leave here after the last speaker, we're asking you to go out these doors, head over there, pull out your cell phone, turn on a light, and think about someone special in your life. Maybe it's your uncle who died in Vietnam. Maybe it's your dad who fought in World War II. For me, I'm thinking of those five sailors last August that died on the USS Abraham Lincoln in a helicopter accident, crashed on the deck, flipped over into the ocean. The reason it's close to my heart is because my son is a rescue swimmer and he was a squadron just before that squadron and they had to go train somewhere else and that squadron came in and they weren't scheduled. They volunteered to go replace them. And they're the ones who had the accident. So when I hold my light tonight and I'm walking under that flag, I'm thinking of them. We can think about the Canadian truckers, the Ukrainian freedom fighters, whoever. But think about someone and hold that light to illuminate that flag. The truckers are going to turn their headlights on and we're gonna have a procession through because we have different backgrounds, different nationalities, come from different parts of the country, but we're all Americans and we're all gonna unite in light tight to illuminate that flag. See you in the light. Thank you so much. We now have the organizer for the Peter's Conflict, Marina Steele. Hi everyone. This has been an incredible experience and there's a few um, sentiments I wanted to share with everyone tonight. So many of you aren't able to go on this entire journey with us um, and it's been a life-changing experience for all of us. Um, some of the things that I've learned that I, I was unaware of after two years of quarantine and one of them is the fact that patriotism is alive and well in this country. Everywhere we have gone, we have received the most beautiful reception, roadsides packed, overpasses packed, and what you mostly see is just the red, white, and blue. Just flags for freedom, pride in country again, and love of fellow country man, which has been so dead for so long. The other thing that I've learned on this journey is how generous Americans are. Everywhere we, we roll into, people roll out the red carpet. There's enough food for thousands of people and no one will let us pay a dime. There's food for the truckers, there's food for anyone else that joins. This has been just the, the beautiful American heart on full display. Amen. It waves and flares on the outside for all to see. And it has just been incredible and I, I wanted to share that. Um, in the back of our bus, we have a Rubbermaid bin and it's full of letters from American people. We have letters in there from nuns, 
We have letters wow. in there from moms and dads and businessmen. There's hundreds and hundreds of letters. But the ones that, that bring tears to my eyes and some of the big burly truckers behind me here are the ones from the children. There's a little girl, Whitney, who emptied out her piggy bank. And there's a $10 bill, a $2 bill, and three $1 bills, and a piece of candy in there for the truckers. Um, a little boy, Travis, you know, said to the hero truckers, thanks for keeping me free, and he taped a cookie to the, to the postcard. And it's these beautiful things like that that are so heartwarming, seeing the American people come together, um, united, for sure. Um, but, but the beauty of um, the American heart and American generosity, it is second to none. Uh, we've seen it historically when people wash upon our, sh our shores for freedom and they are welcomed here with open arms. We cannot let the light of liberty go out on our watch. Amen. It was handed to us by our elders and we need to hand it down to our children for them to grow up in a free country. So I'm so proud of you all for being here. Thank you all for standing up and for joining hands and unifying because we are a united country. Do not believe it for one second that we are divided. We are not, and you're showing it here this evening. Yep. Everyone is. God bless America. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank you. Our last speaker, if I get off the phone over here, is Marcus Summers for the... People's Convoy Co-Organizer. Cool! How about that? How about that? It's great to see all you guys, and if the cameras, would you just go out there and just show everybody all the way out, like, way out there. That's amazing. Incredible. I would like to ask uh, Mike Landis, Ryan Brazzi, uh, Rebecca, Jerry, uh, where's Alan and Bonnie? <laughs> he just, that's who I was on the phone with. They're outside. When they're coming up, while they're coming up, I just want to say, you guys, it's been awesome to see this from the windshield of the tour bus. It's been amazing. Uh, nearly every overpass, there wasn't an exit or an on-ramp, was was cover with people from California to Indiana. That's incredible. It's, it's, we had the pleasure yesterday to uh, get ahead of the, of the convoy and stand on the bridge on an overpass and watch the convoy pass under us. It was it was amazing. We got to talk hands, shake, talk, <laughs> talk to the hands, shake hands, talk to the people. It was it was incredible. So uh, I, I want to say here. Uh, um, these here, at Bonnie, uh, Alan and Bonnie, Brian, Jerry, Mike, and Rebecca, uh, and myself are, are the lead organizers here of the convoy, and I'm telling you, this is just an amazing thing here. We are truckers. Trucker. I'm actually one of the, I think I might have been the first guy that was hit, I was shot at, uh, driving my 379 Pete uh, on I-70 in Ohio. Uh, some of these were on, the, some of these people were on the phone, they heard it. Uh, I was shot at, my, my glass was shot out of my, uh, my truck. Um, I wasn't sure what was going on and they weren't either, but uh, it, was, it was just crazy. That was back on June 8th, 2020. But uh, somehow I dodged a bullet, and uh, the hand of God kept me safe, and I'm here, and uh, I'm thankful to be here. So, we're going to sing Amazing Grace, and we're going to sing it twice, and on the second time, I just want everybody to, to join in with us. Yeah. And you can jazz. Join in now.
if you guys would please, 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 head on around the other side of this building. We're going to open up a very large American flag right between the chairs. I want you all to be safe. And thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the support. Hey, just really quick. I forgot to mention something earlier that's really critically important. I don't know how many of you know about Pastor Art up in Canada. Pastor Art's a guy who's been to jail quite a few times. And he's been, he's been to jail because he's been standing up for freedom. And most recently, he was supporting the truckers up in Canada. He was doing nothing more than passing out food and water and having conversations with him. And they threw him in prison. They're trying to make an example out of him. They made him a political prisoner. So Cindy Champion, who many of you probably know, she's organizing to help get him out of prison. And she has a website. It's called FreePastorArt.com. I'm asking you to all go there. I believe on March 9th, they're asking for rallies in all the consulates, the Canadian consulates all around the country. There's numbers on the website that you can call. You can call the Canadian government. You can call the U.S. government. And you can demand his release. He's a political prisoner, just like our January 6ers. So please, help us make a difference for Pastor Art, who's made a difference for many people. Thank you.